Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'm going to talk about an interesting subject. The subject of uh, limits and the limit of a constant. Something which most mainstream academics haven't seemed to quite grasp. So let's begin. Now, if we take a look at the constant pi and we plot the the uh, circumference on the y-axis and the diameter on the x-axis then what we have is the constant pi. Now notice that it doesn't make sense taking the limit of a constant because a constant is always itself and it doesn't care about the variable which is supposedly changing okay so if you have r over one it can't be anything else but one right so if you try to do something stupid like this um, you'll have this fraction zero over zero which is not a fraction it's 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 meaningless nonsense and supposedly it has a limit that's one okay so uh, mainstream mathematics is, is such a funny subject. I mean, it's, it's really mythology within mythology. So the limit of a constant is the constant itself, okay? Let's look at another example. Now, this is one of my favorite ones. If we vary, again, if we plot uh, sine x on the y-axis and x on the x-axis, this is what we'll have, okay? So we, we'll, we'll have these particular points, a point on the graph, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter indeed. Let me just get this point out of the way because I might want to use it. It doesn't matter that... <coughs> it doesn't matter that the, uh, the... This particular ratio here is changing. Okay, it, it's, it's actually completely irrelevant because there is a constant here. So now let's see where is this constant. <coughs> well, if you look at this function here, f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial plus x4 over 5 factorial, etc. And you take that and you multiply it by x over x. What you get is sine x over x, right? Now, we know that if we put a zero in there in this x value well it's it's really the same as saying um, it, you know you can get away with writing a zero on top of a fraction and the only reason you can is because it means none of three factorial no parts of five factorial no parts of seven factorial and since you know that all the terms the rest of the terms you have an x in them you will know that f of zero is equal to one right so we can rewrite this little limit here as f of 0 times x over x and then take the f of 0 out because it doesn't care about the limit, right? So this particular limit here is just a load of baloney and uh, something that mainstream academics have never really understood. But sine x over x is just the same as this irreducible function. They're precisely the same thing. Uh, now, <clears throat> if you... Mainstream academics think that by multiplying this function by 1, that suddenly a point on the graph, on this blue graph that you see here, is no longer defined. And that point is 0, 1, where you're looking up here. And that's absolute poppycock. So um, f of 0 times 1, and again, of course, taking the limit of a constant, in this case 1, is 1. So f of 0 times 1 is f of 0. Now... There's no need for limit theory at all in this particular case. We know that this expression here is equal to f of x, and we know that it is defined when x is equal to 0. Of course, we cannot write 0 over 0 because that's meaningless garbage, and one shouldn't even attempt to do that. So once again, the limit of a constant is the constant itself, isn't it? Okay, let's look at one more example. Now, so... Mainstream baboons love to punch holes in functions, and they need to be able to do this. Otherwise, their entire epsilon delta arguments go out the window. I mean, they're already 
fake as as they are and they're already full of flaws as they are but they're even less reliable if you can't have holes in functions and the reason for that is simply that they need for example they need to is less than the absolute value of x minus c less than delta right okay they need to be able to have that this Holes in function varies the here. This particular in a, here is the reason they need holes in their functions. Okay, and they it's very easy for the baboons to do that, or they think it's very easy to do that. They think that by multiplying by x over x or x minus k over x minus k makes the function undefined, makes this function undefined at k. In this case, I've used one. Okay, so k is equal to 1. So if we move this along here, you'll notice that if we try to put it on 1, 2, th there's, no, there's no point there, simply because um, you cannot have 0 over 0. And that's just utter garbage, because what else can x minus 1 over x minus 1 mean? But 1, right? It can't mean anything else. So if f of x is equal to x plus 1, and it's equal to this... Uh, fraction that you see here, this wouldn't be true if x minus 1 over x minus 1 could mean anything else but 1, right? So x minus 1 over x minus 1 is a constant, namely 1, okay? So, you know, the limit bullshit that you see professors telling you here again is, is totally irrelevant. It has no place. Um, f is actually defined at x equals to 1. It's very well defined at x equals to 1. The fact that you multiply by 1 doesn't undefine it at x is equal to 1, okay? So uh, I, I really don't understand why my intellectual inferiors, who are math professors with many PhDs in the mainstream, Abel Prize winners and all the other morons, don't understand these things, okay? And it's a shame because they're pushing this bullshit onto students who also don't understand it. Of course, the only ones who really get to pass the courses are the, the ones who are able to lick their teacher's behinds satisfactorily enough. In other words, the teacher's pets, the psychophants, uh, the ones who are not able to think for themselves. And if they're able to think for themselves, they're able to basically uh, put these uh, garbage concepts in the background simply to accomplish a goal, namely to get their diploma and become another high priest of the church of academia. So again, we notice that the limit of a constant is the constant itself, okay? Let's conclude. So what can you expect from fools who contradict their own theory? Right. My historic theorem, geometric theorem of January 2020 states that the slope of the non-parallel secant line is equal to the slope of the derivative plus the difference. It's, it's not even a tautology. It's as simple as 1 plus 1 equals to 2, okay? That's how simple it is. Now, mainstream monkeys horse around as follows. They decide that they're going to define the derivative as the limit of this secant line slope. In other words, they're taking the limit of a constant, people. That's what they're doing. They're taking the limit of a constant. So... The limit of the constant of the left-hand side must be equal to the right-hand side, so they take the limit again of the derivative and of the difference. Now, watch what they do here. Watch very carefully what they do. They leave the derivative constant alone. In other words, the limit of the derivative is a derivative. But suddenly, the limit of this constant difference is no longer the difference. It's zero. What? The limit of a constant is zero, but not the constant itself? Problem is, people, that this difference is a non-zero constant. And if you have to put zero in here, this identity is no longer true. Now, that can't be. And you know why it can't be? Because theorems wouldn't be called theorems if they were not proved. All right, And this, is, this has been proved. So the illiterate baboons, my intellectual inferiors in the mainstream, that means your math prof professors and your teachers and your tutors and all your moronic colleagues who think they know what they're talking about, claim or they fail to realize that the derivative is simply 
the slope of the non-parallel secant line minus the difference. Okay, so I've covered a lot of things in here, but the most important thing is that they have this hypocrisy. You know, it's whenever something fails miserably, they decide to add a new rule. It's the same thing with the inequality I showed you earlier. You need to be able to punch holes into functions because it's actually untrue that for a function that for a function to have a limit, it need not be continuous at that point. That's absolute rubbish. If a function has a limit of a point, it is most definitely defined at that point, and there are no exceptions whatsoever. So if your teacher tells you anything like that, call the moron out. Don't let them go. Do you want to be a moron like your teacher, like your math professor? I don't think you want that. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Remember to subscribe, to spread the news, and also to donate money and credits on my Odyssey site, to which I'll place a link. Then, <clears throat> I also encourage you to visit a very nice new math channel. It's just begun, and it's going to be one of the top math, math channels in a few years' time. Uh, so, I think you should take the trouble of subscribing. And that's pretty much it. I'll try to come up with a nice, new, interesting <coughs> video in the near future. Chat to you soon. Goodbye.